Hello and welcome to the Getting Started with Family Law Software in New York webinar. My name is Barbara Stark and I am going to spend a little time with you showing you an overview of the program and giving you tips for learning the program specifically with a few of the issues uh, that are specific to New York. So I am on the desktop version of the program. We also have a cloud version. And the things that I'm going to be talking about here in this webinar are going to be applicable to both versions. But I just chose to show it to you on the desktop version. Um, in Family Law Software, there are four tabs across the top. The first one is called the Files and Settings tab. Um, I call this the Administrative tab. It's where you administer um, your Family Law Software files. The next tab is the Client Information tab. And I call this tab the Database because this is where you enter and edit information. And now we're in New York, so that'll make it particularly applicable. So this is where you enter and edit your uh, data and information. The Negotiate tab is fed by the data from the Client Information tab. And I call this the Attorney tab, because this is where lawyers can really analyze different factors that impact child support and maintenance as they're negotiating or trying a case. This also is where you can divide property. The assets from the net worth statement all flow into a property division calculator and property division spreadsheets without needing to have Excel. So all of that happens in this powerful negotiate area. The final section is the report section, and there are two different sections. One, uh, these are the official New York um, forms, and the other is the reports where the data can be read in an unofficial format. Um, a lot of times we just don't want to look at this data in the network statement format. We want to look at it in an easier to read uh, manner, and that's what you can accomplish in the reports section. So let's go over to files and settings and uh, have um, a talk um, about the program and um, some of the features um, that we have here. I am in the open, save, and send section, and um, the first thing I want to point out to you is that there's an um, arrow here that if I click it, it opens a section. So if I click this, it opens the client data entry section. It's a good habit in family law software to keep your sections closed, open them to work on them, and then close them again. Because sometimes if you keep all these sections open on some of these screens, um, to go back and find where you are or to edit something becomes a little frustrating. So that's just a little tip that I would give you. And I'm going to open client uh, data entry here. And I'm going to open manage files um, because I want to show you two features here. Now, this screen is a perfect screen um, to give you a tip about how to learn this program. I think it's really good to start in files and settings. And this is the screen to start with. And almost every screen in Family Law Software has a how-to video, which I recommend you watch, and then a help on this screen section, which I recommend you read. And then I recommend that you just start your way through the program and read what it says, because much of what you need to learn is right here on the screen for you. But you can see on this screen that there are a bunch of blue question marks. Well, these blue question marks are kind of like a tech manual, because this gave me some information. And if I click more help, it gives me even more information. So if you have a question about where you are or if you're learning the program, I think it makes a lot of sense to read the blue 
question, question marks. Now, just two things I want to show you on this screen. One is the new button right here. We click this to start a new file. I'm going to cancel out of there. Um, but the other is the new client button. Now, this is for client electronic data entry. So at the beginning of the case, instead of the client filling out a form with a pencil or a pen, and you're having to be the data entry operator, this allows the client to put the data in on his or her computer, and then it comes automatically back to you, and you can then start to edit the data. I highly recommend that you send this to your personal email and experience it yourself, both on the client end by putting in some data and on the attorney end by seeing uh, the emails that you will receive. Because after you've gone through all that, you will retrieve the file and that's when the new file will open with all the data here. So that's the new client and the new button. Um, don't ignore the settings section and focus on this section, professional information, report options, court information, and disclaimers. This is going to be important in terms of some of the ways that your documents are going to print out. The update software is for the desktop only. One of the benefits of the cloud is that you never have to update it because it's always the latest. We will notify you if there's a major change to the program. Um, but if you have the desktop, it's probably a good idea um, to either check periodically to see if you're updated or just to update your program once a month or so. And finally, um, we are here to help you. If you've looked at the video and read the help and read the blue question marks and read the screen and you still have a question, uh, we encourage you to email us, um, but even better to send us your file. Uh, it's very hard for us um, to be able to understand your question a lot of times if we can't see the file. So by stripping it, and then sending it to us, we can help you uh, even better uh, in our tech support uh, that we give you as a subscriber to the program. And then the last thing I'll mention administratively is um, just so you know, there is one family law software file per client. The file builds as the case goes along. So as the case goes along, if you have documents that are unsigned, because a signed document, obviously, you would scan. But if you have reports um, that you've sent out to a client or used in meetings or whatever that you want to save for future reference and just to keep a record of, you're going to use your PDF button to um, point that document to the computer uh, secure server or cloud location where you are storing your client documents. And you can put PDFs of family law software reports there as well. Now let's go to the database. And you can see that there are three sections on the left, a net worth statement section, a child support and maintenance section, and a full financial data section. Data entries in any of these three sections populate the other section, meaning if I have income for John and Betty in the support and maintenance section, that same income is in the section for the net worth statement. So these sections talk to each other in terms of populating. Now let's just look briefly at the New York Child Support and Maintenance section. Here again is where you're going to want to watch the video, read the help, read the blue question marks, and then work your way through each section of this screen to get an understanding of how it works. And when you get to the very bottom, you'll see links to the official CSSA worksheets. So this is going to be your central work area for New York Child Support and Maintenance.
I do want to point out on this screen for you the quick case button. If, let's say, you don't have a file um, established for the person sitting in front of you, it's a potential new client, and you want to do a very quick calculation without opening a new file, you would just click quick case. You wouldn't even have to put people's names in, throw in the data, and you'll be all set with your results. You can see at the bottom of the screen that I don't even have to look at the CSSA worksheets. I have the child support and maintenance amounts are sitting right there for me. Now in New York, um, if you are doing a case that has a net worth statement, and I'm, I'm aware that net worth statements are not done in every case, but if you do have that kind of a case, you're going to be entering your data in this net worth statement area. Um, the full financial data section is actually where the rest of the world um, enters, their, um, enters their data. Um, but New York has a special section. So you just start with each section, starting with background and child, and work your way through it and enter the data um, as you go through all these submenus. Here's the asset section and so forth. So when I open this up, it looks um, just like the net worth statement and you can enter your data in here. Of course, after you've watched the video and read the blue question marks. There's one little asset feature um, that I just want to tell you about um, that is not on this asset screen in New York. Um, and I'm going to go down to the asset screen in full financial data <laughs> to show you this. These are all the assets um, that are on your net worth statement. You can see there are three different um, bank accounts here. There are little arrows here that allow you to rearrange the order of assets. So if I want to move this Chase account down, top, or bottom, I just go to these three little arrows and that will rearrange the order up here in the net worth statement. The problem is that little green, those little green arrows are not here. So that is one area where you would go down to this asset and liability section. If you're a mediator or otherwise not creating a net worth statement, you would do all of your uh, data entry here in full financial data. Now, once you have mastered the basics, which is really what this client information um, section is about, you would move to the negotiate tab. Um, I'm not going to be going over any of these calculators other than to highlight them very briefly for you. But the top part is where you're negotiating your child support and maintenance, and the bottom part is where you're negotiating property. I do want to point out this income summary screen because this is where you should really start when you're ready to learn the negotiate tab. As you can see on my screen, this is a monthly after tax cash flow analysis, and it is particularly important in New York. Um, because of the fact that the formulas in the state of New York have not changed to recognize the impact of the change of the federal uh, tax law. Family Law Software does a complete federal tax calculation. It also does a complete state tax calculation, including the unbundled portion, where in New York, uh, we get uh, to be able to deduct uh, maintenance and it's reported as income, uh, and we get extra uh, tax deductions that we don't get for federal purposes. So Family Law Software does all that, and it's embodied in our after-tax cash flow work. So you should really start to totally understand this page, and then you will be ready to work in the rest of the calculators that we have uh, here for you on alimony or maintenance and child support. In the property area, this is our division of property calculator. And um, as opposed to Excel, which has formulas that we need to be concerned about, in family law software, you can move assets by percentage 
or you can move them by amount. And as you move them, the target that you've established is changing automatically. And when you're finished with your exercise of moving these assets around between the parties, you simply click the Division of Marital uh, Property button and you have your Statement of Proposed Distribution. Uh, you can also change the title of this report, uh, but we've defaulted it to say Statement of Proposed Distribution since we know that's um, a very popular title very often for property divisions. We also have in the program um, a number of formatting options for how this report looks. So you'll be uh, learning about those various reports as you work through the program. And then there are other division of property calculators here as well, um, the divide property uh, calculator being really the most important one. And then lastly, we have reports, and um, we'll just talk briefly about this section. Um, one point that I want to make, as long as we're on the child support section, is that you can see that all the numbers are in a blue field. Um, and the rule in family law software is that we don't change a number in a blue field. The reason behind that is that these blue fields are the results of formulas. And if you overwrite a blue field, you can mess up the operation of a lot of different formulas and really the power of the entire program. So if I wanted to change Betty's income, I go back to my database. I go to her income and I change it here. And then that will automatically change my uh, number in my worksheet. Now there are exceptions to that rule. They're, they're not very frequent, but there are exceptions. And that's where you know that you're ruining the formula and you know why. So the most frequent example in New York is the child support cap, which is currently $148,000 and that's in a blue field. So if I want to overwrite the cap to $250,000, I can do it. Um, the program is gonna be unhappy with me. It turns um, red, which it'll do in just one second. Hold on one second while I get it here. There we go. It turns red because the, um, uh, the cap formula has been ruined, but it, will, it has changed the child support and the maintenance because it now has the higher cap. When I'm done overriding that formula, I wanna put the, I wanna put the formula back. So now I've reinstated the 148 in my, uh, in my program and it's blue again. So let's go back to reports. We were talking about blue fields here. We also have the maintenance, um, the full maintenance report. And you can change words in family law software. So if you don't like the way we've titled this, you can title it um, however you, you would like. And you'll watch the video to understand how all these work. And then we have the net worth statement. And we give you lots of different options. See, I can click all these different options depending on how you like your net worth statement to print. And one of the nice features in New York uh, with our net worth statement is that it does not print with all of the boxes around it. So, Oh, I don't think you're going to, you know what, I don't think you can see it actually. If I cre create a PDF, I actually don't think you're going to see it in the screen share. Um, but if I did create a net worth statement, the boxes of, from uh, the official net worth statement are all gone. And the report looks very, very, very professional, which is what our users want. It is the official net worth statement. All the verbiage is identical in the same order and all that. Uh, but I think you'll find the look of it uh, very, very nice in terms of uh, how it prints out at the end of the case.
Now, in addition to these official forms, we have the unofficial reports over here. Um, and I'll just mention um, a couple of them. One is the View Edit Tax Report. This report is critical for you to review if you're doing after tax work to make sure that you didn't make any human being data entry mistakes um, because it'll calculate the taxes accurately but it does it based on what you did so this is also a report that you would print and attach uh, to your after-tax work if you were to give it to the other attorney or a judge or so forth um, so that everyone knows where your taxes came from uh, for New York you also should know two other reports um, one report that's I think incredibly important for your child support and maintenance worksheets is the FICA, Medicare, and self-employment tax report. Um, because as you know, the FICA, Medicare, and self-employment are all um, taxes that are added together and subtracted um, from income. And who knows where those numbers come from. Whereas if you print this report, you will be able to show exactly where FICA, Medicare, and self-employment taxes came from. Finally, in terms of these reports on this screen, there is um, the state tax report, which in New York is really important. I mentioned that we have unbundled. There is going to be property tax adjustments made in the state uh, itemized deductions, and there is a place here where the maintenance is actually deducted for the payor and added to the income of the recipient. So in the, the state tax report has become important in New York, and we have it for you so you can show uh, that you've taken the, that unbundled uh, tax into consideration. So those are the tax reports. The other screen that you should um, really pay attention to is the budget report. This is an incredibly flexible um, and powerful report um, area. You can see on the screen I've got side-by-side -side income, child support and maintenance, their expenses on a monthly basis. Uh, there are a lot of different things. There are taxes. So you can actually create reports um, that show any number of features that you want to create to show the data in your data base. Well, that is the end of our little uh, webinar here. I hope um, it's been helpful to you in terms of getting into the program. And if you have any questions, you can again go to um, our support location. Um, but you're also more than welcome to reach out to me. My email address is barbara.stark at familylawsoftware.com. That's the end of the webinar, and uh, I know you're going to find the program very valuable in your practice.